Hello and welcome back to Nikki Does. If you follow this channel, you'll know that we have not had the latest and greatest tools for video editing. And today I want to share the newest tool that we've got, and I'm very excited about it. And it is uh, it is in line with the technology that we like to show on this channel. So um, we unfortunately do not have additional staff for editing, but we do have a capability and that is uh, we now have a Sharpie marker. So we're able to do some title screens like this, like new batteries, and we can show uh, a little bit more detail about some things that might be exciting to you. So with that, and I'm gonna put that out of the way now, I'm very excited about it, but I'm gonna try not to talk about it for the rest of the video. But today I do want to show how you change the batteries in a rescue link. And I know there have been some other videos on this, but um, I think, you know, I wasn't 100% sure when I um, when I ordered the battery because as you can imagine, ACR, those who produce the Rescue Link, would very much like you to send this back to have a full diagnosis and to make sure that it's 100% and everything else. Um, it is not too, mu not too far off, um, just like when you have a Rolex or some other fancy watch and you need to send that beauty in for an occasional service like this particular fine Casio model that I have here. Um, now this I send in absolutely on time, every time for service. As I've had this since uh, 1987, I believe, and I've sent it in exactly zero times. And it has actually had only one battery replacement in its entire life from 1987 until now, which is 2024, which I think is amazing. So if we have our um, distracto meter set, that's two distractions from the original video. I hope you're still with us. If you're not, there are plenty of other good ACR Rescue Link battery replacement videos out there that have a lot less clutter and fluff in them. So uh, let's stay with it. We'll try to stay focused on this and um, let's get this changed. So ACR will want you to send this in to have a massive service done in it. And I don't think that's necessary. Um, I think what you're doing if you do that is you're adding bad luck on bad luck on bad luck and the outcome of those bad lucks would be like the chance that something goes wrong with this, something goes wrong that you need this, then something goes wrong with your battery is kind of a low, low chance in my world. I'm okay with that level of risk. Um, some people would say, oh my God, why would you do that? I, I, because I think you take lots of calculated risks all day and it's easy to say, oh, you should send it in. If you have any mechanical skill whatsoever, this is going to be easy. So this is a number one Phillips. This is a Rescue Link and it's one of the older ones. It's not a Rescue Link Plus. I think I bought this in around 2009 or 10, some, here, 2018, battery expires. So, uh, I'm not real worried if you see my UIN here, but I am going to try to cover my uh, beacon registration information. But um, yeah, so this is a PLB375 from Rescue Link. Um, yeah, it's going to be a shame if that doxes me in some way, but I hope it doesn't. So you're going to need a number one uh, Phillips screwdriver, not a number two and not a posi drive, but a number one. And uh, there are two screws in here. You can imagine how this is going to go. We're going to remove two screws and we're going to disconnect the battery and put a new one in. We're going to run the test. I am currently in my basement workshop or my workshop, which is uh, in the basement. So if I run the GPS, nothing is going to go wrong there. It's not like it's going to get a clear view to the sky and we're going to be activating the satellites, but I'm just going to run the self test. So here's the gasket and the gasket is still very pliable. Um, you know, it's not sticky, it's silicone, so it's not, none of that's going to happen to it. But just so you know, it's clean. If it weren't clean, I would wash it. I would just go over to the sink with some regular soap, like dish soap, and I would just scrub it a lot like this and rinse it off. But this is, we haven't been out in the dirt with this, so uh, it's clean. I'm going to set that aside. Um, we see the bat tree here with its connector, which looks surprisingly close to that bat tree and connector. We see the date on here. You'll find out here that I'm a bad father because I just sent one of my kids away with this. Um, it says, it's all wobbly from the uh, heat shrink, but it says here, if I zoom in, June of 2018, we're supposed to re re uh, replace this. And the date of manufacture is 
no later than six years from the date of manufacture. The date of manufacture, I don't know if we know that, do we? No. So, but if it was supposed to be uh, six years after, and this is 2018, I, I don't know, I think I bought this like 2012 or 2010. So um, we can see inside there's no evidence of water damage. I'm just going to pull that battery out. We can see inside that there's no evidence of water damage. Here's a silicone mat that uh, keeps the battery from destroying the circuit. I don't think you have to tear this off, but I'm going to. Okay. You can see a lot of conformal coating in there. So even if this does happen to get wet, this whole microprocessor area is covered in conformal coating. Um, there is an O-ring in there. Uh, where the antenna meets the body and that still looks pretty good. I'm not going to do much of anything about that. And we can see the uh, screws that mount it in here. I don't know that there's a benefit to taking those screws out and I don't want to mess with that seal. So, Well, that it wouldn't mess with that seal because there's a uh, gold contact right there, gold plated contact. No corrosion, really no nothing in there. So um, you can see these mechanical parts here will press into that foil and that's going to make the shielding work behind the battery. So I'm not going to mess with that either. I just don't think there's a benefit to doing a whole lot of screwing around with this. So let's put this back in. Yeah, I'm okay with some risk, but I'm, I don't think there's any point in doing stupid things. I'm already going a little further than I'd like. Um, I am going to grab another Sharpie. Yes, we have multiple ones here on the channel. And I'm going to put the install date on here. So pretty cool. They I don't know if they did this on purpose, but they put the label on the other side so I can write things where I can see. And what I'm going to put on here is um, I'm going to put the install date and month, which is I don't really I'll worry about the, the replacement schedule on my own. So this is um, two zero two four dash one one installed in my penmanship pen my markermanship so installed then and I'll put my initials on there yes those are my initials and then I will plug this in, and if I notice the uh, connector is kind of flipped because the black is toward me or toward the bottom of whatever device you're viewing on. So I'll plug that in there. Simply set that down here. I do not like that word. And then I'll put the gasket back on. Give it a little blowy blowy. Uh, this thing wasn't cheap, but I gotta say I'm quite okay with that. I this is not the sort of place where I'd want to get the cheapest device. Um, set the top on it. Uh, set it the correct way, and the top is going to cradle the battery pack just right. Also, now I'm going to be sure not to pinch that gasket. I want it to. Um, slide in there properly. So that feels pretty good. Keeping a little pressure on it uh, so it doesn't float a bit. And then when I tighten these, I'm not going to give them, when you tighten screws in plastic, even though these have threaded inserts, this is not like cylinder head of your 1934 Ford torque. This is, uh, you just need to get it tight enough. And I don't know that I got that correct because it seems like the gasket did not go around the this bright yellow fluorescent yellow plastic on the back here. So uh, I'm going to just kind of check that. Maybe it was. So I, there is a ridge in there. You see that ridge? So I've got that. So the ridge is not showing. I'm just giving a little wobble wibble wobble when I tighten it here. Someday it feels like this sticker is going to fall off the back here. This uh, NOAA, for the U.S. people watching, we have the, Nat the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration runs the search and rescue, or SAR, team. 
and then periodically I verify that my registration is correct. So now that this is good, um, it does tell me back here how to test this and how to activate. So um, unfortunately it's worn off a bit. So to activate, I press the power button for one second, usually in situations of imminent danger. And to uh, test, I press, I think for one second to test and GPS test, I press for longer. Now GPS is not going to work down here. So I'm just gonna press test once. And the T button is this lower one right here. And here we go. And I believe it's going to give me a a blink, a long blink, and then a white flash. There it is. So that's telling me this is working quite well. And I probably will go outside and just test GPS just to be sure it works. When I'm done, I'm going to wrap this uh, kind of like a measuring tape style steel antenna under here, clip in the end, all really nice. Would be interesting to take this battery and um, see how much energy is left in it. I'm sure there's quite a lot, but that replacement on Amazon was like 12 bucks. I was going to show you, but the, the cells inside are Panasonic cells. So I really think it's not some super cheap, awful cost reduced thing. I'm quite impressed with it. Uh, I'll see if I can link the, the link to the Amazon um, purchase below. I'm gonna look for some scissors so I don't clip my face off right here on live TV. Uh, I thought I had the scissors right over here. Curses. Well, in any case, uh, we'll use this uh, scalpel because then we're more likely to do some real damage. Um, all right. And I don't want to cut through the... Now's the time to tune out if you just don't care anymore. So they did solder... That's... That's a normal pack, nothing special about it. Some nickel bus bars on the cells, I would think. Little dot of hot glue in there. Connector. As I say, the replacements were, the replacement was 12 bucks. I don't see a, a reason to DIY this in any way whatsoever. I mean, I know you can get this and you can spot weld, but I see no reason to DIY this yourself. Let's see what the uh, expiration date on each cell is, if I have that. Oh, that's going to be, oh, 2022. So uh, this says uh, May of 2022 on there. It's going to be hard for you to read. Oh, easy enough. May of 2022. So uh, assuming the other two cells are the same, which... I would kind of hope they are. There's another one. May of 2022. Um, yeah, this, these are only two years out of date. That's not too bad for a lithium ion battery. And I will take a looky looky at the uh, voltage. And I don't think I'm going to show you because my there would be a lot of camera gyrations to get it up there. But I will take a looky looky. This is a, um, these I think are three volts each. Yeah, so this should be nine volts from terminal to terminal. And I will honestly tell you what I get here. Oh, I might lie a little bit, but you know, that's what you get. 9.7614, 9.7614 from my Agilent 34401A six and a half digit multimeter. So 9.761 volts, that is well within. I would be curious what the energy left in here is. I'm sure it's really high, but again, for 12 bucks, just not worth it. So there's the ACR Rescue Link personal, the PULB, the PULB. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Not much to say about it. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope it was useful and uh, hopefully it works out for you. Thanks for watching.